Hello, everyone. I'm going to read a fan fiction of Samurai Jack, and the shipping is Jack and Aku, and is one of my favorites. And it, if is anyone is interested of this reading it, there's a link description on below, and it's from fanfiction.net. Summary. Feeling betrayed and bitter about himself, feeling that everything he did amounted to failure, Jack wanders aimlessly around the world, searching for a time machine, a way to get to his real home. Little did he know, the future had profound plans for him all along. Disclaimer: I do not own Summary Jack, in any way, shape, or form. Summary Jack. Is a pound creation of Gendy Tarkovsky, and is licensed by Cartoon Network. No amount of profit was made in the making of this extremely long one-shot. The enemy's daughter, inspired by the episode Jack and the Warrior Woman, season one, episode four. I still remember that, and then. It's also one of my favorite episodes. As you've expected, my lord, you are indeed pregnant. I see. How long has it been? For my analysis, I sum it up to three months total. As I realize, the doctor looked up from his high-tech scanner, staring curiously at his subject. May I be so bold as to ask how this happened? How else does one get pregnant through sex? Of course, the doctor hastily bowed. Of course, master. How stupid of me! Indeed. Continue your analysis. The doctor returned his attention to the scanner. On the outside, he was as calm as a cucumber, but on the inside, he was positively reeling from these readings. He would have thought it impossible if he wasn't staring blankly at the result. Silence do- dominated the pause. However, the doctor needed to piece together what exactly happened. This kind of news shook the very foundation of humanity. Current discerning, my lord, I've identified the child to be a human nord female, very healthy and very much alive. I know, the affirmation woman say. I've already tried to destroy it, but it is as indestructible as I am. That forced the doctor to pause. He stared the woman in utter disbelief. You tried to kill your own child? A glare soared in his retort. He could only look away, rebuking his overstep. Forgive me, my lord. I spoke out of turn. He got a frustrated huff and I replied, "It is fine, doctor. You are one of my most trusted servants, so I take your opinion quite highly compared to others. I do admit, I have been quite moody these few months, and that is quite understandable. Women tend to shift behavior when bearing a child within them. By nature, it is perfectly normal." Conduct. Although it is a surprise that you're feeling mood swings, given your condition, it isn't highly impossible. Oh, why then? So this thing isn't killing me? No, no, my lord. She's merely feeding nutrition. What you consume, she'll consume as a result. But I am immortal. I have no need for consumption. Doctor briefly spared her glance and nervously turned away. Well, she's consuming whatever your body qualifies as food, I suppose. I have no idea how this works. Giving something like this has never been documented. Honestly, I n- never thought you could get pregnant in the first place, Master. Event- eventually, your theories about me were proving false. Exactly, it's both fascinating and groundbreaking. How so? Was the curious inquiry. The doctor shook his head. 
It is trivial for someone as important as you. If that's the case, then I'll allow your obvious deflection. Silence again. Dr. Koff, feeling a tad uncomfortable. May I ask a few questions? You may, but be wary of your words. I instance. So, firstly, why have you reverted to human female form? There was a little lapse after that question. The doctor knew that the woman was contemplating an adequate answer. After some time, he got one. My body refuses to turn anything else momentarily. I have lost the will to shapeshift. Again, the doctor was surprised. Stared at the woman, wide-eyed. The woman narrowed his, her eyes. Do not think that little attribute weakens me. The doctor nodded frantically. Of course, but given the predicament, I had hypothesis that your body instinctively took the form most suitable for childbirth. I assume after you've given birth, you can revert to your original form. I do not have an original form. I have preferred forms, and the one I use the most just happened to be my favorite. Noted, my lord. May I ask another question? Ask as many as you wish. I will be here for a while longer, I presume. Unfortunately, I need to do a thorough che medical check on you. So yes, it will be some time before you may leave. A frustrated sigh came forth. What is your question? Forgive me if it's none of my business, but do you plan on keeping the child? As of now, I may do so. It is my legacy after all. Do you know who the father is? That seemed to be a very touchy topic. The doctor did not if he struck a nerve. But he hoped for the life of him that it wasn't the case. He waited with bated breath for the woman's answer. Yes, I've only ever shared corner plaza with one man. For what reason? Onyx's eyes fixed on him, and he gulped in trepidation, silently shrinking into himself. I therefore the mere satisfaction of his despair. My plan had been to get close to him enough that he realized my deceit. He will be broken. It didn't work out too well, however. Who is this man? It makes me sick to say his name. But it is, in fact, Samurai Jack. The doctor gasped in surprise, for this was the last person he ever expected. You mean... That summer, Jack, the casting thorn in your side, your mortal enemy? There's no other. The doctor thought to himself. He lifted his head and offered the woman a wicked grin. That is brilliant. With the knowledge of sharing a child with you, it should utterly destroy him. Truly, your intellect is far beyond our years, my lord, Aku. Aku gave the doctor a blank stare. In his femur form, he looked exactly like Equa. I do not comprehend your meaning, doctor. This wasn't planned at all. It is a consequence I could not have ever seen coming. The doctor raised both brows, surprised with Aku's lack of grasp. If he had to be honest with himself, he thought Aku knew all the secrets to the universe, finding out otherwise was truly an astonishing discovery. Am I to believe that you don't know the significance of children in parenthood? Do not ever think less of me because of trivial matters such as those and no. I have never bothered to entertain the likelihood of a child, so I know very little of the impact which you have highlighted a child actually brings. Explain it to me. Strolling at the command, doctor was quick to respond. As you wish, master. Offspring are extremely important to the spouses that brought them to life, even more so when they're blood-related. Parents tend to be more emotionally dedicated to their children and infancy 
than even themselves. The samurai is a man of honor and principle. If he were to find out that your child shared his blood, it will shatter his very dis his belief and reasoning. If this isn't enough to obliterate his righteous nature, I don't know what else could. Aku processed everything. Did humans really think children were that important? If Jack were to find out that she was carrying his child, would it stagger him to such a huge degree? Aku had little facts of humans in general. All they were good for worshipping her and doing her bidding, or so she had intentionally thought. This got her a little curious on a few things. She wondered how this baby would impact her. Would she be affected by it after she gave birth to it, or will it just be indifference? What about Jack? What would he do if he found out? Shiver went down his spineless back. The doctor bowed, showing his deepest respect. As I've said before, you have truly ahead of your time, my lord. Aku barely heard him. She sat on the table, contingency plans working their way into her subconscious. Page break. It was not a good day for Jack, first of all. He was finally able to find a time machine with the help of some squid companions he made near the ocean. The portal was located in the desert, in some remote and desolate temple. Jack knew all too well that it would be another challenge he needed to conquer. He knew that it would never be easy and that enemies were most likely awaiting his arrival. He hated those moments tremendously. Aku always had his eyes on him and barely gave him time to recover before he tried to kill him again. How he wished he could be rid of the Shogun once and for all, liberating not only his past but this distorted future as well. But Aku was nearly impossible to distort. Every single time he came close to killing the demon, Aku always found the means to escape his demise leaving Jack to ponder this next encounter. Surprisingly, there was very little activity from Aku these past few months. In fact, aside from a few beetle drones, there was virtually no signs of Aku whatsoever. That kind of revelation made Jack more anxious with each passing day. He wondered what Aku's next plan of attack would be. He expected Aku to attack any moment, especially now that he was headed to another time portal. He really loathed these times, because something always went wrong. The last time he had been close or anything that manipulated time and space, Aku was with him. Ikra, how that name would bring him to rage. Admittedly, in the beginning, he didn't trust her. But over time, with the amount of battles and victories they share, Jack allowed his guard to lower. He'd been entranced by her beauty and entranced by her warrior instinct and noble path. He had very little interaction with women. His journey never allowed such a luxury, so he thought very little for his attraction to her. She seemed to be have felt the same way about him. The way she stared deeply into his eyes, as if he was the only thing that existed. The way she smiled that enchanting smile, rosy lips, quirking and revelly, like she couldn't help but being happy with him. It all seemed so genuine, so real. He couldn't help but gaze at her visage. He was a man, no matter how noble or righteous or proud he was. He could never hope to resist her sensuality. And when she started getting bolder and showing him just how interested she was in him, rubbing his thighs, whispering provocatively in his ears, he tried his best to resist. He fought off her onslaught, and from there, sexual tension bore heavy fruit. He felt very uncomfortable, even more so when he noticed she didn't. She kept 
coming on him, more daring every time. She always knew the right ways to tease him and leave him wanting. He could clearly tell that she knew of his infatuation and didn't hold herself back from reciprocating these feelings. And finally, one night, when he could not take anymore, when he confessed himself that she was the one when she made him feel so happy, he gave in. They made love, passionate and uncaring love. Hearing her whisper his name in that breathless voice, so sated, so satisfied, Jack shook his head. He tried to crawl on the bubbling furry that was surfacing. Everything he shared with her was a lie. She wasn't even human, merely the shogun's shawl in the sky. It made him want to throw up every time he came to that conclusion. He never allowed himself to be swayed by any distraction after that. Even though Aku tripped him so disgustedly, they dimly opened his eyes to his intended path. He was more determined than ever to put a stop to Aku reigning of traitor, never falling for his tricks again. Jack's hatred was more personal than ever before. He looked up. He had finally arrived at the deserted temple. He cautiously walked around the ruins, looking tim timorously at each path he could see. He wanted to make sure that this was his last attempt to at leaving this world. He needed this, just one thing to go his way. He had been through enough crap for a lifetime, but he knew it would never be that easy. The path to peace never was. He just hoped that Aku's absence would continue even now. He maneuvered around the damaged terrain, finding it more and more suspicious as time lapsed on. There wasn't anyone. Around here? No, there was. There always was. He narrowed his eyes, his thought more purposeful and contracted. He was on high alert, waiting for any danger. He unsheathed his sword, swiftly deflecting a bullet that was aimed at his head. There was definitely something there. He training his training ears pick up footsteps but it was difficult to pinpoint their exact location, so he, he remained pert, waiting. The steps were getting louder. Jack looked around by the shadow of a breeze, providing little light to use for aid. Another shot, another deflection. Jack was having a hard time. Not only was the person familiar with these surroundings, they knew him pretty well too. He cursed. It was most likely another bounty hunter. This time, when the shot came, he saw exactly where the origin was. He watched the area, surprising the enemy who swiftly moved behind pillars and fire, a melee of bullets. Jack was trained extremely well, to the point where everything like speed bullets seemed like slow-moving snails. He blocked every one of them, honing in on his target. The enemy moved again, but Jack was able to intercept. He slashed his sword at the silhouette and was surprised when a loud clank resounded the blow. He could see clearly now and witness a short cut, red-headed woman holding a blade in her hand, while the other was hidden by the cloak she wore. Her blue eyes stared into his, cold and unchanging. Jack was still flabbergasted that the enemy was a very young woman. It wasn't unusual per se, but it was very rare. Who are you? He questioned. My name is Alistair, and by order of Lord Aku, I am here to terminate you, Samurai. A female drone. Was Aku experimenting? Was he testing to see if he would lower his valve he was going against? The opposite sex? Jack grit his teeth. He'll show him. He attacked Alistair quickly, aiming to behead her on the spot. But the woman dropped to her knees and struck at his legs with her own blade. Jack backflipped back away from the sword and landed a few feet apart from the female drone. He dodged again, his sword by his side and a determined look on his face. Alistair charged as well and met Jack halfway. 
loud metal clinks of blurring swords reverberated around the vicinity. Sparks of light illuminated the dark place, showing broken infrastructure and strange paintings. Alistair judged another assault from Jack, but she wasn't fast enough to avoid a cut in her arm. She bled a bit and forced Jack to pause. Jack stared in disbelief at the red ligand. She was human? He had no idea and immediately charged, changed his stance from attack to defense. Why are you doing this? He needed, needed to know. He entertained many possibilities, but he needed to know. Fighting warbirds was one thing, but battling his own kind, the kind that suffered for centuries, was a different story. Alistair's gaze remained cool, even as she answered him. My family is in debt to him. That is all I'm willing to say. Jack understood just from those words alone. Aku was using her. She was good, but not skilled enough to be him. She was merely a sacrifice for Aku pleasure. He snarled, angered by the very thought. He was not going to play into Aku's hands ever again. She charged at him, and he easily disarmed him. She fell to the ground and immediately had a sword pointed at her head. This battle is over. I implore you to surrender. Alistair gritted her teeth in anger. She glared at Jack. Sorry, but my situation is a little more complicated to just give up. A blast of smoke shot out of her cloak and Jack found it hard to locate. I was warned that I was no match for you, so I will retreat for now. But know this, Samurai, our battle isn't over. After that, she was gone. Jack was surprised that the match ended so early, but she chalked it off to good fortune. But then he realized he had failed to keep track of the portal. He ran around the temple, looking at every place he could, but nothing was found. He should have known. Allison must have destroyed it prior to his arrival. He yelled in frustration and slashed a few rocks to vent his anger. Once he calmed down, he straightened himself. He felt gloomy. Another failure of time. Page cut. He walked outside the temple, sluggish and lazy. He just wondered how Aku did it. How did he always find a way to mess up his life? Why couldn't fate just be on his side for once? Why couldn't he ever get a break? He couldn't help but blame himself for how everything came in to be in the future. If he just wasn't so arrogant when he had Aku at his mercy, if he just didn't boost about the Shogun's defeat, that time could have been used wisely. But it was the precious second wasted that allowed Aku to thrust him into the future. It was always a crushing blow knowing that he wasn't good enough back then to stop this whole mess. I have to admit, I didn't expect you to be out so quickly. Jack slowly raised his head. He vaguely recalled where he had heard that voice from. It took him a short time to surmise, for the very person who ruined his life was saying mere meters away from him. It was Aku, all right, surrounded by thousands of beetles' bones, but that alone was not the reason Jack's eyes were as wide as they could be. No, the reason for his shock was the fact Aku looked a lot like a younger Iqua. His brows forward, his eyes narrowed into slits, and his body trembled and airy. It was taking every single part of his self-restraint not to give in to his wrath. Aku! The name was spat out with a healthy dose of venom. Aku casually raised a brow. She had faced the samurai many times and knew him quite well. She could read his tender clearly from his body language alone. Of course, she knew why that was. They had done what no one would have expected on either side. They had sex, wild, starving sex. Truthfully, Jack was tricked into it, but the passion wasn't fabricated in that moment. They both lost themselves in the pleasure of the flash. Even Aku had to admit it felt incredible at the time, and that's precisely why Jack looked exceedingly peeved 
because he remembered that moment and remembered how much he enjoyed mentally snickering his anger. Akuna gently conversing with him. Yes, Summon Jack, it is I, the almighty Aku. How have you been? This custom increased his fur, and here Irkwa, familiar voice, made him want to kill everything in sight. You vile villain, he spat. You dare mock me by appearing in that form. This time, Aku couldn't hold herself back from outright laughing to the spot. As much as I, it pleases me to see you suffer, do not think of yourself so highly, Samurai, like I would ever indulge you with the body that you so reverently ravaged willingly. Oddly, he was a tad confused on what Aku meant by willingly. He struggled to concentrate. His eyes were starting to see red. Even the monk's training couldn't stop the annoyance rage inside him. He took on his fighting stance, ready to destroy all the drones in the Shogun. He would make Aku pay for this insult. Whoa, 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 Aku say, hastily putting her hands up into the air. Do you not want to know the reason I came here? Why I look like this? Whatever you say will no matter to me, demon. Aku bows took on a curious tone. She seemed genuinely intrigued with his attitude. Are you still hung up on the night we spent together? Come now, Samurai. Surely you must realize I meant not silence. I do need to hear anything from you. Aku went a bit. Yep, Jack was still bitter a bit. She was surprised that the Samurai could hold such a grudge. Well, this might interest in you. Jack her enough. He couldn't stand her voice anymore. He made to charge, but before he could do anything, Aku verbally struck again. That night we shared, I conceive a child. Even Jack was in that nave not to understand what she meant. He paused briefly, processing what he just heard. His eyes strayed to her stomach. He could actually see the swell in her belly. Knowing she was getting through to him, albeit slowly, Aku pressed her adventures. That's why, Samurai, I'm pregnant with your daughter. Jack breathed, breath caught in his throat. He stood like a statue, even as Aku laughed herself hoarse. He didn't move. How does it feel, Samurai? Aku chuggled. She was immensely surprised on how white the doctor had been about Jack's reaction. Looking at his drained face made her wonder what most despair she couldn't still. It would be so much sweeter to see him broken while she killed him. But in her devious joy, she was completely thrown off when Jack smiled. It wasn't a gentle smile. It was more of a, I am going to freaking kill you smile. You honestly believe I will fall for such chicory another time? His smile turned into a furrow snarl. I will not fall for anything that leaves that disgusting mouth. What? Jack charged at her, drawing his blade with both hands. What are you doing, she shrieked. You would dare attack your own blood? Her picnic cry then swayed Jack's movement. He gained distance and was nearly on her. Watching her plan failed, Aku started to retreat, but Jack surprised her with a sudden surge of speed. He jumped into the air and landed astoundingly closer to her. He easily took out two beetle drones that were shielding the shogun. Aku wasn't fast enough to evade a slash that nicked her arm. It was a small cut, but the pain was still unbearable. Ah! She screamed, ducking and rolling away from the blade. Attack him! Attack him! The drone immediately went after him and it provided Aku with the means to escape. Since she couldn't use her ship shifting, she out to escape inside a beetle drone. By the time Jack was done making a mountain of scrap metal, it was far too late. Aku had successfully retreated. He cursed. He was a bit curious in Aku's behavior. 
coming to him and declaring that she was pregnant with his own flesh and blood was not only stupid but very unlike the shogun. She curiously lied by doing that, so what was that about? Another thing was Aku never shapeshifted the entire fight. Jack wondered if Aku was sh suffering from an illness. It wouldn't be impossible, for Aku had been sick before. Without a demon present, all the samurai could do was entertain notions. Oh. Okay, we finished reading it. This fanfiction came out before the before season five releases in Adult Swim. Goodbye. Thank you for listening.